people understand that there's an answer, there's a way. We, the people, have to say. So send the orders to prepare that we, the people, do declare. Send the good news, send the word. We, the people, will be heard. I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. Rise, idle no more. A movement started by the First Nations in Canada. I'm your host, Lou Ismay. I want to make some corrections regarding our previous program. We um, talked about three foods. We only mentioned two of them. The three foods that make a delicious uh, combination, deliberately so, they cause us all kinds of weight problems and illness problems. Salt, sugar, and fat. Actually, a delicious combination but doesn't do us much good in the long run. We resort to that if we don't have, a, have enough money to buy uh, wholesome foods, or if there are no wholesome, new, wholesome foods in our neighborhoods, meaning that there's a shortage of uh, vegetables and fruits and things. We also spoke of an anti-poverty project back in the 19 early 60s an organization that was in Rensselaer County anti-poverty project the first one in upstate New York at that time and then we spoke about a period between World Wars one and two and somehow we worked in something that hopefully will never exist. That's World War III. So we apologize for those things. And now we'll get on with some of the news. Libya. And we'll take, we'll take a look at a, at a map here of Africa and get an idea of what we're talking about. This is the Mediterranean Sea up here in We've got the country of Libya in here. Three countries border Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, and Egypt. And the activities going on here have caused the governments in these three countries to be fearful, almost terrorized, What's going on here is going to have to be solved sometime, somehow or other by the people involved. Maybe other countries will have to join in. But we are responsible for much of the situation. Libya is an unusual country. Notice this is Benghazi. This is Tripoli. Uh, anybody in the U.S. Marine Corps, and many of us who were not, know the, the Marine hymn from the show, halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. This was once a hangout of pirates who were affecting the trade, capturing uh, ships, impressing the sailors, and our Navy went over man named Dec uh, Decatur was responsible for doing uh, uh, s s changing the situation, eliminating the pirates. At any rate, these are communities far from one another with vast areas of the Sahara between. 
It's almost like an archipelago of islands. Each of these cities has its own militia. There are two people vying for a national office. The area is a turmoil and we are somehow involved. We, um, this group that's in here, ISIS, taking over various areas of this part of the world. As a result of our actions in Iraq. So that's going to be with us for a while. A professor named Vijay Prashad, who teaches international studies at Trinity University, talked about Gaddafi. He had a long, as a matter of fact, two interviews with Amy Goodman on Democracy Now! He talked about the fact that Egypt and the United Arab Emirates apparently have flown some airstrikes in Libya to try to break up the situation. The big battle for Tripoli, and he explained the situation. The U.S. and NATO opened the door with airstrikes to eliminate Gaddafi favoring his overthrow when he was assassinated the country fell into turmoil now he said that the, the militias in these various cities being paid by the government in Tripoli It hasn't stopped them from fighting, but it's interesting that that would happen. So each of these cities has its own militia, and these militias are fighting and are being paid. Now, there's a man named Salah Badi. He's an unusual man. He likes to kill people. He's threatened to kill the parliament. The parliament is so terrified that it's moving offshore, <coughs> occupying a cruise ship or some other large uh, vessel to conduct the government. Being a safer place than being in Tripoli or anywhere else in the country. He talked about the military and the morale being very, very low. And he mentioned that the three countries who have been in there for years, England, France, and the United States have withdrawn. So what will happen to Libya? Whatever it is, is going to affect that whole part of the world. So, one other interesting item. Dr. Prashad mentioned, made it quite clear, that the military establishments in four countries have been keeping in touch with one another. The Egyptian military, that in Syria, Iraq, and Libya not liking what's going on, keeping an eye on things. And it would be interesting if the United States found itself fighting alongside with some others, the Kurds, for example, not liked by Turkey, considered terrorists by Turkey. The United States has labeled the Kurds as terrorists. What kind of a mess are we getting ourselves into? It may be strange bedfellows or whatever working together to stop the Islamic State, 
which apparently is running rampant, killing, slaughtering is what it is. One grave recently whole, uh, containing, one mass grave containing over 800 um, slain people, another about 500. Uh, how many more will be discovered? Uh, we've seen, we know about the beheadings of journal journalists. If they weren't beheaded, there are a great many who have been killed. What are we do? What are we to do? What should we do? What should we not do? Whatever it is, is it important to keep track of things? Is it important to ask our leaders in Congress, in the White House, to get together, solve some of these issues? instead of squabbling and, in, 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 uh, and to stop the stalemate in Congress. These are all linked together, are they? On to other things. The biggest tax scam ever. An interview on Democracy Now! with a man named um, Tim Dickinson. He's a contributing editor to the Rolling Stone magazine, and he was interviewed regarding this article, which is in the current issue of Rolling Stone, and the current issue has some interesting and things about Robin Williams, and it's worth reading, and other magazines are, have uh, tributes to him. This is a story, the biggest tax scam in history ever. Top corporations parking profits overseas, ducking hundreds of billions in taxes. And how is Congress responding? It's rewarding them for ripping us off. The IRS established 35% and Congress did too. That's the tax that corporations are to pay on their profits. As little as 4% is what's being paid by some. At least one recognized General Electric. There are three trillion dollars stashed away in other places. Shell companies around the world. It works this way. The money is stashed in other countries in the Shell Corporation, a different entity, that corporation then invests the money in the banks, Wall Street, Manhattan Island, New York State. So there's profit to be made by that, plus the profit that's sitting there in the other countries because the taxes are lower. And the money owed to us would be is enough, the taxes properly paid, enough to take care of food stamps, education, health, helping to fix the bridges and the roads, doing the kinds of things that we are not able to do because we don't have the money to do it. Now, 35% is the nominal tax. During the Bush years, the George W. Bush years, 
these organizations, these corporations, decided that they would like to have their money returned to the United States, but at a much lower rate. And so it happened. They paid 5.25%, just a little bit more. Instead of the 35%, they saved themselves 30%. Congress approved. Congress, either party, has not stepped in to change the system. What shall we do? There are so many things going on that we are realizing it's been secret, hasn't been publicized, many things not covered by our media. We are aware, aren't we? So what are we to do with the changes that may be necessary? Are we going to speak up? Have we thought about that? There's an example of people who are about to speak up on an important subject. Mr. Obama is looking to bring some changes regarding climate change as a result of the latest report from the United Nations about the seriousness of the situation. He is attempting not to make a treaty with other people, but to have some sort of an agreement, a non-binding agreement, to cut the greenhouse gas situation. On September 21st, matter of a couple of weeks from now, expected in New York City a climate march. Expected tens of thousands of people from all parts of the country going down and expressing their feelings, anger, hopes, for ex and expectations of Congress, corporations, deciding that the issue sh needs to be confronted. It's also expected to be support from throughout the world. If any of you are interested, there's a phone number to call. You can reserve a ticket, bus ticket. Leaving at 7.30 that Sunday morning, returning about 8 p.m. in the evening. It's a local phone number. It's a 518 number. 465-4444. Four six zero zero. That's the Citizens Action Committee. Uh, uh, ask for Mark. You give your further information. That same day, that same Sunday, in our area, in Albany, is a peace march. Participated in by congregations of various denominations. The Interfaith Alliance of New York State is one of the lead organizations. Bethlehem Neighbors for Peace. The, organ the uh, religious organizations themselves are co-sponsoring. Same weekend, Two things going on. Peace, environment, climate. Think about joining, at least finding out, keeping track of things. Well, we go on to other things. 
Ferguson has been in the news. The sad situation with Michael Brown, body lying on the ground about approximately four hours, unattended, police officer finally being identified, the burial, the funeral, approximately 2,500 people in the sanctuary crowded in, another 2,000 outside, or rather in other rooms. Two additional things regarding Ferguson. The first thing of importance has been the militarization evident by the police response. The bear cat truck, 360 some odd thousand dollars, money provided home, homeland security. Thousands of am uh, rounds of ammunition Camouflage, silencers for the weapons, night goggles, night vision, armored vehicles of various kinds, even aircraft. The ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, interviewed on Democracy Now! It turns out that there have been about 800 recently, 800 SWAT team events, attacks. 80% of them against homeowners. The militarized police barging in, flash guns, uh, flash uh, grenades, flashbang grenades, stun people, stun guns to serve a warrant, a non-criminal thing. Only about approximately 7% that were real emergencies requiring such activity. One instance, flashbang grenade, landing in a, 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 an infant's crib, infant severely injured, family held at gunpoint, Mother wanting to go to the child, forced to remain on the floor or on the ground. Father being held, parents not able. It was hours before they got to the youngster. What compassion, what great understanding by men and women who are members of these teams who are so focused on attack, 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 which is really what it is, isn't it? Should we be concerned? Another thing about Ferguson, and this one's a real, well, let's talk about it. The community of Ferguson, which is in St. Louis, uh, Louis, Louis County, or St. Louis County, Missouri, it's a little bit somewhat northwest of the main city of St. Louis, are living off the poor. There are actually $2.7 million budgeted in the fiscal nine, uh, 2014 fiscal year. $2.7 million budgeted, and where does the money come from? It comes from harassment of the people of color. Men and women receiving $50 traffic tickets, unable to pay the tickets, the fines go on, the arrests start, People are put in jail, asked if this was debtor's prison. What would you think? What would you say? 
people wanting to and interviews and democracy now explaining the situation wanting to uh, to comply but not able to because of unemployment or underemployment so people impoverished at the whim of people who are in power do we sit by idly do we become aware do we support either with contributions or prayers or whatever we do to stop this kind of activity in our country Nelson Mandela in 2005 spoke to 20 30 whatever it was 20,000 some odd people in Trafalgar Square in London he said that slavery and apartheid are man made things or activities however he put it and they can be prevented can be stopped and prevented slavery and apartheid and he said poverty is the same it prevents people from living in dignity and with respect had we thought about that poverty can be eliminated in our country and throughout the world if we have the will to do it and a living wage can be provided for everybody if they want to work if they're able to work they can make some kind of contribution to society as a whole without being forced to do it only a few percentage of people are violently angry and wouldn't participate probably but we never know when will we stamp out poverty drive through any of our communities hamilton hill connected the arbor hill albany look around in south troy and parts of the area years ago in the anti poverty project in Rensselaer County it was learned that it did not matter where one lived or the color of the skin or the religious preferences what mattered was the willingness was the hopefulness because people feel helpless no matter who we are we feel helpless and hopeless and useless and worthless when we are constantly badgered by the way government conducts its affairs not considering the people the dignity the self respect and what's going on in the communities those things can be eliminated so we can get to be hopeful and helpful and useful and worth self with self respect maybe we should debate it sometime if it's a bit deb debatable thing but how about that can't we do something it takes will power will we we get back to the situation with this big scam. We'll turn the page on this thing here just for a minute and take a look at it. It's not rocket science, says the former White House official. Concentrated wealth is buying the agenda it likes and blocking one it doesn't like. The real problem with multinational corporation tax avoidance isn't that these firms are breaking the law is that the law itself is broken 
And we might add that Congress so far has seemed to be unwilling to change the situation. Now, there are a few of the major corporations who are involved in this thing. Microsoft, oh here, you can read it. We'll put it here under the on this screen. Microsoft, Microsoft, 76 billion, yeah. Pfizer, 69 billion, Exxon Mobil, 47 billion, Goldman Sachs, 20 billion, Walmart, 19 billion, McDonald's, 16 billion, Caterpillar, 17 billion, and General Electric, 110 billion. If the arithmetic is correct, at $392 billion stashed away, the total amount of all that's known is $3 trillion. 35% of that is owed to the people of the United States of America. Will Congress take action to get that money back into the country. Will it? Bridges, roads, most important people, food, health, education. What shall we do? There's more. I want to get back to Ferguson for a moment um, with this militarization. Uh, there were 200,000 am ammunition and magazines for various weapons. And um, just checking this list over, uh, we've covered all of that. Something in Gaza, it's a mess. It's a disgraceful mess. So far, 2,139 killed, 3,000 children injured, 1,000 of those children will have lifelong disabilities needing all kinds of care, maimed, whatever the situation is, 1,800 of them orphaned, Thousands of people homeless. Schools damaged. The latest figure was 140. Not, we're not sure that that's correct, but that's one, that one of the figures that we saw. 373,000 of the children. 373,000 children need mental health assistance, psychosocial support, damaged for years, 372,000 children traumatized. What is the justification for that kind of damage? We always find reasons for doing things. Which ones? What's the humane thing? Now people are sitting down talking, which in itself is a major improvement. But where do we go from here? Ukraine problems. Interview on democracy now former ambassador to Russia, U.S. ambassador to Russia, stated that this is a family matter in the Ukraine. Outsiders involved in it aren't going to be helpful at all. He mentioned that 
Congress, the White House was warned decades ago, keep NATO away from Russia. It will, as the country, look upon NATO as threatening. The sol one of the solutions, one of the first solutions in the present situation was to have President Obama declare that there is no possibility of NATO even being considered for, the U for Ukraine for perhaps 10 or 20 years in the future. That alone would ease the tensions. That alone could cause the withdrawal, withdrawal of the people who are fighting and threatening the sovereignty of this country of Ukraine. Should we be teaching some of our young people or college people about peace, about negotiations, something we could do differently? Oh, and before we go on to something else, we want to talk about one of the big tax jo um, dodges. Burger King, King buying a very good chain of good food. If you go to Canada, you probably, if you travel, you probably have already stopped in at Tim Hortons. And if not, um, maybe you get the opportunity to do so. That combination will create the third largest chain restaurants, whatever we call them, in the world. Well, look at some other things. We try to do this every month. We'll take a look at the month of September. This is the uh, current issue of the Farmer's Almanac, the one with the hole in the corner. And this is our area of the world from um, Charlton, Maine, down here to Albany for the month of September. Here we go. Temperature, a little above average. Precipitation in the north part, a little above average. In our part, a little bit below average. Showers. We've had some showers north, sunny south, turning warm, 10 to 16. It will be cool at the end of that period. Now we have scattered showers coming in toward the end of the month. And the end of the month it's going to be sunny and warm. So we'll see. This is a chart down here, well, well, we'll show here. So we have for September, uh, uh, temperature is a little bit higher and precipitation is about normal. Something else in the news, that Solidarity News, um, something has happened in West Virginia. Monsanto claims office Claims office opens in Nitro, West Virginia. Now, dioxin was was manufactured. That's a lethal item, dioxin. Well, they've set aside something like $93 million in the settlement. There'll be 30-year medical monitoring program for members, $21 million for testing, and a subsequent fund of subsequent fund of 63 million to continue treatment depending on the level of dioxin found in the tests. Now, while we have solidarity notes in front of us, this is something that we really might consider very carefully. 
Thomas Jefferson. I hope we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations which dare already to challenge our government to a trial of strength and bid defiance to the laws of our country. Made that statement in a letter to George Logan in 1816. Think. 2014. How many years this began back then? And when we think of the task scam, how could it have happened without the acquiescence of our Congress and perhaps you and I? in some way. This is the current issue of Mother Jones News. And this is the story. This lady, the headlines, The Chevron communiques. Secret cable shows how Hillary Clinton State Department sold fracking to the world. And this is a map that indicates what's happened. And it started in 19, in 2012, when as a Secretary of State, she made a trip to Romania and Bulgaria these countries were not interested in fracking. She hired a, an attorney named Goldwyn. It wasn't long before both of these countries accepted fracking. These hash, the, the, the key to this map, license permits. The lighter color is zero to 25, and then the next color, and then the deeper color more than 101. So, Romania, Czech Republic, Poland, Ukraine, Lithuania, Russia, Netherlands, Sweden, North Sea area, France, Scotland, the United Kingdom, so our State Department a couple of years ago began to assure that the U.S. corporations who wanted to uh, conduct fracking operations were able to do so very lucrative great deal of money ignoring the possibilities of using re renewable resources rather than fossil fuels Germany has spent 25 years developing a program, principally solar, is doing very well, generates a great deal of its own power. They're further north than we are, but they're doing it. Why can't we? We hear from scientists that 
Well, we, we rightfully should be keeping our reserves of fossil fuels in the ground and not developing them. But we have bomb trains coming into a residential area in our communities, coming through our communities, especially threatening in Albany, down near the port. This is a current issue of fortune. We talked about the Pope in the previous program and what he's doing to, uh, with the Bank of uh, uh, at the Vatican and earning money for the poor. We have a very good situation here in New York. Um, the appointment of um, Richard Kaufman to head up a billion dollar program in New York State regarding clean energy. It's a hopeful sign man has had experiences in Wall Street. He knows his way around. And how well will he work? How well do we support him? But here it is, a billion dollars, New York Green Bank. We all need to keep track of that. Something that is of interest. A book. The Green Boat. Reviving ourselves in our capsized culture. Why the Green Boat? Well, it has to do with a group of people in Nebraska. And this is the state of Nebraska. Up in here, north, south of North Dakota, North Dakota with the um, tar sands, the XL pipeline, this area of Nebraska, western area, central area, and through here. This sand, sand hills, an aquifer so lush that just digging a shovel full or so down into the uh, soil, and the hole fills with water. The Aglala Ag uh, um, Aquifer. Three or four or five people got together, wondered what would happen, felt helpless and hopeless, what turned out was involving the entire state in stopping the expansion of the XL pipeline. Even got elected people involved. Door to door, word of mouth, various kinds of activities none of all, uh, none expensive parties, meetings, dinners, whatever the foods were part of this activity involving people getting to the legislature now, because the pipeline crosses an international border from Canada, that involves our State Department and involves our president. Now, there may be a compromise 
to reroute the pipeline, but it's not going through their water supply. They're determined that their water is not going to be targeted and poisoned, made unpalatable. Can't some of us do the same thing? Well, in New York State, we've got this great anti-fracking movement. And we've got people who tell the, our governor, stop the bomb trains. The trains loaded with, with the petroleum, well, tar sands, oil. Keep them away from our residential areas. A few cartoons and then we do go on to something else. Here it is. Attention, entering Ukraine by mistake. All from the Times Union. This is appropriate. The list back to school and the list to, for a loan at the bank. And this one. Look at all those neat ladders and the sharp one. What's this one for if you're middle class? The middle class has virtually disappeared compared to what it used to be. Can't sleep, try sleeping, and wake up refreshed. the issue of marijuana. Now, there were some things here we can do very quickly. This um, activity is st still going on. And by the way, uh, around Hoosick Falls in our area, this is um, uh, something that's uh, this, the, these, build, these quilts. So apparently it's a part of a national movement to create quilt trails. There was a meeting on Labor Day. One of the things that was displayed was this poster. Adjunct faculty. Now, adjunct faculty all across this great state and our country. A disgrace. In order to cut expenses, faculty are hired on a part-time basis without any resources with which to work. Apparently, always money to raise the salaries of the president and the top administrators, but not enough to provide for the faculty who are held responsible for teaching. This was another poster at that time. And uh, the, it just shows how many jobs. If, if there was a million dollars set aside and it was used for um, um, uh, fracking, it would create five jobs. And as we go down through here of uh, various things like wind and solar, solar for example, uh, it would be 14 jobs. And finally, when you get down to transportation, you're creating 22 jobs. If everything works well, doing some of these things, wind power, solar power, biomass, other things, where to put the money, who to listen to, maybe people who do some research. But the situation with adjunct professors, including in the uh, community colleges, is something that needs to be attended to. In St. Rose, they're apparently going to start a union. Something needs to be done. It's not just the very poor who need a living wage. 
Everybody needs a living wage. Everybody does. The 0.001% of the people don't. They have enough money to invest. They can borrow money so they don't have to use up any of their investments. They can borrow money for less money and use it and pay it back on an annual basis, whatever the situation is. But it's happened before with the situation that exists now, existed in the past. The first time, or the last time it was really serious, was the Great Depression, the 1930s. What will it take to tip us into a Great Depression? Same situation, same percentage of people in power, same percentage of people with the um, uh, economic power. Think about it. This time it's more serious, though, because now we have a global situation. Our planet, our home. What do you think? Keep in touch. Want to debate? Want to discuss? Let us know. The first of the month, first of Wednesday of every month, we talk about these things at the Moon and River Cafe in the Stockade area of Schenectady. Might want to put that on your calendar for next month, first Wednesday of every month. Time to go. I've been your host, Lou Ismay. Thank Gun Jarrett for his engineering. Thanks for being with us. Support the food banks, the food pantries, all independent stores, the independent cinemas, the independent bookstores, and of course the things that are amongst our favorites, the bakeries and the candy shops. And the libraries support them. Until the next time, pay attention. So send the orders to prepare That we the people do declare Send the good news, send the word We the people will be heard We the people everywhere There's a message